Welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name's Gabby. And I'm Tim. Tim, it's a special day today, is it not? Tomorrow. No, today, I'm talking about today. Oh, today. What's, yeah. what's special about today? Well, we're filming the 2024 oh. Kia Sorento EX in Midnight Lake Blue. This is our very first Kia Sorento to arrive in this color, and blue just happens to be one of my favorites. Tim, what about you? Absolute favorite. Well, really? Because I've never seen you wear blue before. Uh, every day but today. <laughs> Guys, that was a joke. So today, of course, we are filming the Sorento. We're doing a full in-depth walkthrough, and I promise we'll get into it in just a few minutes. But I wanted to start off with today's video by saying tomorrow's Tim's birthday, and he's not even wearing blue today. Yeah, no blue today. I, I don't know what's happening over here. But regardless, we're going to give you all the information there is to know about this trim level and even the price point and powertrain, because let me tell you, for being one up from the base model, there's a lot in this car, right? Absolutely. Okay. It's gorgeous. Glad we're on the same page today. Yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> and one more disclaimer I'll say before we get into the walkthrough is, well, we're not just a YouTube channel. We're actually a dealership, a Kia store, Brantford Kia, like our studio sign says over there. We sell, service, and deliver vehicles. For new cars, we do Kias, but we also have all kinds of used makes and models, even a Porsche 911, if that's your cup of tea. Yep. Um, but on top of that, we also have two Hyundai stores. So if you're in the Hyundai side of things, you can definitely check us out. We're located within Brantford, Ontario, but we also have a store in Owen Sound, so also in Ontario. Yeah. Now, with that being said, let's get into the walkthrough. Let's go. All right, Tim, do you remember how to do this? I think so. All right. Well, Hopefully. You, you gotta flip the camera. <laughs> I just was gonna stand here and... Uh, <laughs> stand here and... And see, Very there we good. go. All right, so starting off with the price point, it's 42,975 Canadian. And let me again reiterate, this is a Canadian spec trim. So if you are in the States, your equipment will vary on your car. Now, this is one up from the base model. All trim levels of this rental in Canada do get all wheel drive with terrain mode. So you can drive this vehicle in snow, mud, or sand mode. You also get the option of a nice sport mode, normal mode, and smart mode. I love this vehicle. The Sorento is by far one of my favorite cars in Kia's lineup. And that's largely due to what's under the hood. So let me pop that for you guys and we'll take a look underneath one thing you'll get in this trim that you're not going to get in the entry is the 2.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine so if you go one trim below it's naturally aspirated you lose quite a bit of power but of course if that's more your thing that's why you have the option with this trim level you're going to get again that turbo engine that's going to output 281 horse with 311 pound foot of torque compared to the 191 horsepower that the naturally aspirated engine offers. Tim, do you think it's worth going turbo? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, it's great. You are a speed demon, so uh, I expected the answer. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So under the hood, turbocharged engine, like I mentioned, but we also get a different transmission. It's still an eight speed, but instead of a regular automatic, it's a dual clutch transmission. That means we have two clutches, but don't worry, there's no clutch pedal. So if you can't drive stick, you're fine. It operates similar to a regular automatic transmission. For the headlights and just the grill in general, it's a fun new design for 2024. So we still have a signature amber daytime running light. It's just in a new design now. This is Kia's new design language called Star Map. I was about to say Starlink. No, no, no. <laughs> so Star Map, and we have a vertical stacked LED headlights. When you move up to this trim, it's not just a regular LED headlight, it's actually a projection style light. So nice to see. Of course, you're gonna get superb brightness and a very, very sharp cutoff. More about the color now though. So it may look different and it certainly is. We used to have a beautiful shade of blue in the Sorento called Pacific Blue that was a metallic flake paint. This one, it's a solid paint. So there's no metallic flecks in it at all, but still a very nice color to have. I'll give the phone back to Tim. <laughs> all right, another thing that's fun and new. So this is again, one up from the base. So it's not a true, true base model. However, if you are looking at the base, you're already getting great features like a front radar plate that's gonna be utilized for forward collision avoidance that works on pedestrians and cyclists, and of course vehicles. We are also gonna get highway, sorry, not highway drive assist, smart cruise control with stop and go. So if you're driving this vehicle in the city, it's great to have a function like that, especially if you do have a dual clutch transmission where creeping is not always the best thing to do in your car. We also get this chrome, woo, bright lights. <laughs> we get this chrome accent around your black grill and down below we get some nice air vents. There's also front parking sensors integrated into this black section of the bumper. They hide quite nicely, so it's good that they're integrated into the design, but also very functional. So if you are parking this vehicle in a garage or just tight spaces, you will get an audible alert inside to let you know when you're getting too close to whatever is around you. All right, let's take a look on the side and these wheels. I'm so happy we get such nice wheels for the EX model because if you're cross shopping with the LX, yeah, the wheels on the LX are not very impressive. So we get a beautiful mix of that shiny piano black and of course some aluminum accents as well too. 
Tim, do you remember what the LX wheels looked like? They're pretty ugly. They're really ugly. So this is yeah. quite the upgrade, but don't worry if the LX is more your style. Wheels are one of the easiest things you can change on a car, so not a big deal. Personal choice. Yeah, for your mirrors, you get a mix of piano black with body color, and of course, you have an integrated turn signal repeater and chrome accents along the side of the vehicle. When you move up a trim, those chrome accents will turn into black accents, which again, might be more your style. And don't worry, we've done a video on those models too if you want to compare. Your roof rails are nice and flush with your roof. They are again chrome, so everything is very cohesive. There's not a lot of mix and match materials. Everything blends in very, very nicely. All right, so now let's take a look at the back. This is by far the most impressive feature on this car considering its price point. Power lift. So you can control that, of course, pressing the button over there, using your key fob, or even simply walking up to your vehicle as long as the key fob's on you. And don't worry if you don't like that feature, you can turn it off. If it's a bit too high for you, you can grab this handle, bring it down a bit, and then reset the height to whatever your preferred setting is by pressing and holding this button. See, it beeps, and now every time I open it, it'll go to that height. For the Sorento, every single trim level here in Canada comes with the third row. Now everything else gets really different on this trim. You actually get six seats in this vehicle. So when I knock down one of my rear seats, you'll be able to take a look and you'll see that our second row has captain's chairs. So there's a nice big break in between your second row seats, offering a more premium experience for your second row passengers and even get armrests. Now those seats, again, far more convenient, a lot more comfortable, but if you do need a seven seat option, you will have to go down a trim. So as long as that's okay with you guys. <laughs> Under here, we do have our kit for our spare. The spare tire itself is actually located underneath the vehicle, so it's great peace of mind knowing you have, always have a spare with you. And let's close this, take a look at the back end of the Sorento. Not much has changed from the previous body style, but I'll point out the only thing that has. Tim, come take a closer look. This one, you really got to look to see what the difference is. Tail lights, they're connected now. Before, they used to be separate. Isn't that crazy? I think that alone is worth the upgrade to 2024, but that's just me. <laughs> All right, another thing I do love about the Sorento, and of course, is translated from the previous generation. Mm. Rear wiper is hidden, so it's tucked away underneath the spoiler. And not only does that clean up the look at the rear end of the Sorento, it also protects it from just elements. You don't want it being frozen, stuck on there, full of mud, whatever it may be. Spider webs. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Tim's looking at me like she's crazy. All right, and then for our gas tank, it is on the driver's side, just regular unleaded fuel. That's a common question we get asked for the Sorento considering it is a turbocharged engine, but don't worry, regular fuel's all, all good. Let's hop inside. I'll have Tim show the inside before I actually hop in. So you'll notice we do get leatherette seating for all the seats in the house. And of course that six seater configuration like I mentioned earlier. When it comes to driver comfort, you will get a powered driver seat and for the driver and passenger, we get three different levels of heat for our seat. So very nice, even lumbar support. I'm gonna quickly hop in and let's turn off the climate control first. There we go. All right, so seating configurations, you can adjust the bottom of the seat as well as tilt it if you want a more tilted seat. The backrest and lumbar support. Lumbar support is one of my favorite things, especially if you do have your heated seat on. You can say goodbye to your chiropractor you just take a nice ride in your Sorento and you're all good. Now, looking at the door over here, we have this nice dark chrome accent tying everything. We're just making a difference in the vehicle for sure. Over here, we got our window controls, our mirror controls, and our lock and unlock. Your child locks are located here, which might be different for a lot of people that are used to seeing it in the actual door itself of the rear doors. But um, over here, window and child locks are controlled in one section, which is kind of convenient if you think about it. Over here, we get our brightness adjustment, our closure of our trunk, <laughs> I was about to say hood, and then our traction control. The hood release is located there. That's pretty given though. And then we get our light stock. This vehicle does have automatic headlights, so you don't have to worry about turning them on when it gets dark, but it also has automatic high beams. So if I turn my high beams into auto mode, and I can do that by selecting auto and pushing it forwards, just like my high beams, my car will shut those high beams off when it senses another vehicle approaching, or if there's just enough sufficient light around me, like if I go from country to city. So pretty smart if you ask me. The steering wheel itself is leather wrapped and it's heated. You're only gonna get a heated steering wheel on this trim and above. And let me tell you, that might just be another reason to jump. If the turbo wasn't enough for you, heated steering wheel is almost a must have here in Canada. You okay, Tim? Good. Yeah, okay. 
On the left side of the steering wheel, you'll see we have our voice commands and media controls. And I might grab this from you, Tim, got just it. to show it better. Okay. So, <clears throat> we got our talk button here for voice commands, volume controls, phone button, favorite, and mode that will select different media modes. Your infotainment screen up here, where your gauge cluster is fully digitized. So, all of this is individually controlled. But, or digitized, I should say. But you can only really play around with this section here. So you can do so by pressing this button over here. It's gonna cycle between different modes. So I get my trip, my lane assist, and my drive power distribution or all wheel drive distribution. If I drop this down, you'll also be able to see your tire pressure, but you do have to be moving for that to show. You can also, let me zoom in a little bit, see your speed limit assist. So that'll tell you the speed limit of the road you're on. Very convenient if you're in an area you're not familiar with. Distance and empty and what systems are on when it comes to safety. Speaking of safety, I talked a little bit about our smart cruise control. These are your buttons to control it. So this will be to turn it on. This will be to set your speed, plus or minus, and then that is your following distance. What makes smart cruise control different than a regular cruise control system? Tim's on his phone. I guess. Your generation complains about younger people being on their phone. It's you. My You're generation. You're the problem. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so essentially what it is is you have your cruise control on, right? But you also get to set your distance from the car ahead of you. So if they slow down or speed up, your car will do so as well as long as the speed that they go to isn't more than what you set. But the benefit of this is if you do come to a halt, so whether it's an accident or any sort of traffic, your car stops and then it goes again all by itself. So that was my little speech. Do you use smart cruise control, Tim? Yes, I do. Very nice. Do you find it smart? Hopefully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then on top of that, I love using this function with the cruise control because it's almost an automated drive. It is our lane follow assist. So I'm going to press it down and you'll see we now have a new icon on that cluster. Essentially, that's going to utilize the camera that's located right over here to make sure that we have a safe distance in between our lanes. So we're not um, going anywhere to the left or to the right, but it also sees upcoming curves ahead of the road and will take it for you. So if you're on a bridge that has a bend in it, your car will do it for you as long as the lanes are clearly marked. If you're on a country road where there's no lanes at all, gravel road, I don't know, I can't help you there. Neither can the car. <laughs> all right, now to the screen over here. This is way different than what we're used to in the Kia Sorento because it's running completely new software. This is called CCNC. Tim, can you tell me what that means? I didn't think so. <laughs> So it's Car Connected Navigation Cockpit. I didn't listen to her, so that's why. <laughs> Tim, Tim doesn't even work here. He's just <laughs> hanging out. All right, so complete touchscreen, um, very, very simplified graphics. If, one thing I really quite like about this is everything's so easy to find. So if you do have to find something while you're driving, you can easily see, okay, that's my phone icon. You can also make it very easy for you as a driver, especially utilizing the driver profiles, by moving around what you use and what you don't. If you're never in the maintenance menu, kick that to the back and you're fine. And when it comes to usability and responsiveness way faster than some of the technology that we're used to. You also get really easy functions like being able to pull this down and quickly control your display. So the illumination on the screen, access quiet mode, whatever you really need. So it's very much like a phone in the sense that it's user friendly and it's familiar. Below that we have our air vents and this is a new design for the Sorento. If you look at the previous models, you're used to seeing a, a lot of things happening over here, but now it's simplified, more sleek. This is also new and this is a love hate thing. It's a switchable climate panel that also controls your infotainment. So right now it's in climate. You can tell because our dials are showing cool and warm. So I can use it to control whatever I need to control. You do get dual zone in this trim, by the way, and automated con climate control. But when I switch this, it's gonna go to my infotainment. Now, after a while of driving this car, if you do decide to purchase it, you'll quickly decide which you use more and which one makes the most sense to you. And once you do, you just press and hold this icon or anywhere on this section of the screen really, and pick which one you'd like it to default to. That means if I'm on my climate panel, I select infotainment. After a couple seconds of me not touching it, it's gonna go back to infotainment. So it's a little easier. Um, I suggest probably leave it on climate because you can control a bunch of your infotainment from the actual steering wheel. So it's fairly easy to do so there. Heated seat icons are right over here and you do get the amber light illuminating to show you what selection you're on. Three different levels, like I said, for driver and passenger. Oh, the gimbal's freaking out. No, it's good. Oh, okay. We're okay. <laughs> Over here, we have a USB-C. This is gonna be for connectivity and charging, or you can switch it to just charge. 
To the right of that, we have just a regular charging USB-C and a wireless phone charger pad right over there. It's very wide and it does have a grip-like surface. So if you do make a hard turn, your phone's not gonna fly to the back of the car and it's a convenient location. If you're worried about it being too dark and you're forgetting your phone when you get out of the car, if you left your phone in there and turn your car off, you'll get an indicator on your gauge cluster saying check wireless charger. So don't worry about that unless you don't look at your screen after you turn off your car, then you gotta worry about that. Gear shift, it's a real gear shift. Something that I shouldn't even have to be surprised about, but a lot of cars have buttons now. It's nice to have a traditional gear shift. You do have the option to flip it over into manual mode or yep. however manual you can Side get shift. in an automatic car mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. manually select your gears. Sorry, my heel is stuck in the mats in this car. <laughs> and then just below that, we have some more driving controls. Another thing I love about the Sorento, so the powertrain is the biggest thing for me, but the ability to actually tune this powertrain to however you like to drive is phenomenal. So normal mode, eco mode, and sport mode. Sorry, Tim, it's kind of, you might have to like put it here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this that, works. that works. Okay. Sport mode and smart mode. Yeah. When I press this down, you'll now have terrain modes and it'll illuminate right like that. So snow, mud, and sand. sand. If I'm in sand mode, I can't also be in sport mode. So there's no sport sand, if that makes sense. It's gonna override whatever you had before. We also have our idle stop and go, parking sensors. I can easily shut that off or turn it back on. And then this button's fun. If I push it, it's going to trigger my rear view camera. So now I'm taking a look at whatever my backup camera sees. This is super convenient because if you're just parked and you wanna see what's happening around you, you can. But as soon as you throw your car into reverse, this comes up anyway. So it's not like it's something you have to push each time you need it it'll come up automatically. Electronic parking brake is conveniently located in the very center. So flip it up to trigger it, push it down while pushing the brake to disable it. Downhill braking control, auto hold braking, and two different levels of heated seat or heated steering wheel for your steering wheel, which is, uh, I love having that option. <laughs> when it comes to this center, we That's have a rem yeah, removable tray for the console and it's huge this is a really really big center console mm. actually put that back in you can take it out if you don't want to use it but it's pretty handy tim do you want to show the glove box the most important feature in this car the glove box yeah so we get all our books <laughs> you're not even filming it there oh. we go there we are perfect all our books in here so quite deep obviously our pdi stuff in here as well mm -hmm. um yeah it's it's loads of space for anything you want to put in there. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one last thing I'll touch on on the screen for this vehicle, because this is new technology. We do have over the air software updates, so that helps a lot. And the biggest thing, especially because this vehicle does not have integrated navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you can use your maps from your phone, whether it be Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, without a cord. The best part is, without a cord, you also have wireless charger. So there's always a way to charge your phone and there's always a way to use your phone technology which is really nice yeah the key attacked. the key is a hot topic because ah. it's, it's a different shape um it's still a very slim profile i find it always looks big on camera because we're holding it right up to the camera but um it's a normal size lock unlock tailgate panic and then my favorite remote start so you get remote start already on this trim built onto the fob you can also use the kia connect app to start your car and uh, select the climate that you'd like to be on when you get into so very very user friendly shall we check out the second row Let's do it. <laughs> so I will, Tim, you want to stay on that side and I'll go in from here? Yep. There we go. It just gives you a better view. All right. As Gabby goes into the back there. It's going to move oh, that. Oh, that's her ownership? Yep. All okay. right. Second row, captain's chairs, like I said, this is going to be your entry level trim to the captain's chairs. They're very easy to fold. So if no one's sitting here, there will be a button on the very top. Push that on this side. Uh, and it'll allow the seat to slide forward, making it very easy for your third row passengers to hop in. When it's time to load up the second row though, the seats slide right back into place. You hop in and then these are by far the most comfortable seats in the house, I will say. So you get these armrests right over here. You can lock them into whatever preferred position mm. you'd like. So if you'd like a higher arm, you can do that. If you don't want it at all, kick it back. And the seats themselves also do recline. So if I want to relax a bit, or if I don't like who's sitting behind me, I can do so. <laughs> and when it comes to connectivity back here, there are USB-Cs built into the backs of the driver and passenger seats. We also get air vents back here, so don't worry about airflow. Your passengers will get it. And then a 12 volt at the very bottom for even more connectivity or charging. Close this real quick, just so there's no glare. 
The backs of the driver and passenger seats, not only do they have chargers, you also get a leather pocket and a mesh pocket. So if you're leaving any sort of device in your car and you lock it, there's obviously no visibility here. Or if you need something, grab and go water bottles, whatever, maybe put it there. Or you could use your cup holders, which are located on the door. Super convenient to have it on the door. I mean, obviously there's no center area here for storage. So it's very, very nice to have. And the door itself has a lot of soft touch material. So it's a very premium feel. The grab handle is quite nice and just a very large window to look out of too. <laughs> so I'm gonna hop into the um, back seats. I'm gonna go in through the middle because you can, um, but I will recommend most people would go through there. Oh, of course our lights just turned off too. That's so classic Kia Hyundai channel. All right, so I am in, there we go, lights. <laughs> I'm in the third row now and I might grab the camera from Tim. There you go. While you're back here, you can see we have more USB-Cs built onto the sides, some storage, and then even cup holders. The seats themselves, you also have um, po not pockets, but slide clips. Yeah. <laughs> clips. I really had to think about that for your seatbelt. So if you're just using this for storage, there's ways to make it more sleek and um, maximize the space. 12 volts in the very back for anything you might need. And we have the option to power fold our second row. So obviously Tim's seat or where Tim is, that seat is already forward. So let's do the left side. I'm gonna push this button and it goes completely flat. So very, very easy. If it's just you by yourself, you can just knock everything down and you don't have to go to each individual side and do it all manually. All right, so I'm gonna hop out now. Me thinks, Tim, is there anything you wanna point out about the Sorento? No, it's just great seating configuration. Yeah. Easy to get in and out of and lots of room and lots of storage room in the back. So that's a big deal. You can do it Especially in stilettos. Especially if you've got a family. And yeah, and it's, <laughs> yeah, just touch and you go. Yeah, I'm sure the door sills. So they actually say Sorrento on them. Just, just a, yeah, and it, yeah, just some nice touches. Absolutely. And this is the e EX version, so EX. it's not the top of the line. No, one up from the base. So good value. Yeah, I will say again, I'm gonna say this multiple times. I say it in every single Sorrento video. Get the 2.5 liter turbo. It is so much fun to drive, so responsive, and more fuel efficient on the highway than the naturally aspirated Sorento. So you can have more fun and more efficiency all in one. You don't hear that that often, do you, Tim? No, no. <laughs> no. All right, well, let's uh, check out some questions, see what you guys have to say about the Sorento, and then we'll sing happy birthday to Tim. <laughs> Just like, no. <laughs> all right. What do you got? Flip the camera. There we go. This Telluride's still here. That was yeah. a... Wolf Gray and Jungle Green, Telluride's. I'm trying to get more Telluride out of the picture. It's a yeah. great car, but today that's not the star of the show. No. Even though you're matching it. I'm matching Wolf Gray. All right. Okay. Um, hi, Gabby, Charlotte. I love watching you guys on here. What is the best key vehicle trims for new drivers with G2 for the first time? So if you're a new driver provided maybe, if you don't have a huge family, I would say the Forte or the Elantra. Yeah. If it's largely just you or maybe some of your friends because it's comfortable. It's very much a driver's car. It's good on gas, especially if you're getting the Elantra Hybrid, might I add. And it's pretty cheap to insure. Yeah, they're good value. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for, for insurance especially. Yeah, and especially when it comes to warranty too. If it's a vehicle that you're planning on keeping for a while, Kia and Hyundai both have great warranties. Five year, 100,000 kilometers. So, And roadside assistance. Um, let's see. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tim. Strange Tim is not wearing blue. Is that suit in wolf gray, Tim? It's wolf gray. John yes. Howard would like to ask yeah. that. Um, let's see. Yeah, you got a lot of happy birthdays. Good, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, since the EV6 wheelbase is as long as the Telluride, does this mean the EV6 is more legroom than the Sorento? This demonstration on video makes it seem like it. So it's tricky. So you do, you have a ton of legroom on the EV6, a lot. You also only have two rows, and in the Sorento you get three. Yes, all. yeah. Um, obviously in the third row of the Sorento, it's not spacious. It's gonna be definitely for your shortest, smallest passengers, but the second row has a lot of room. We might have to get a measuring tape to compare it to the EV6, quite honestly. I don't have those specs left on my head, but very similar feel. Platforms are very, yeah. very close when you, when you take EV6, EV9, mm -hmm. um, Sorento and Telluride, they kind of are, in this mm -hmm. space for, that it's not that much different, especially mm -hmm. putting in your garage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, great card, but I just can't accept that any car of this size can't have five adults comfortably due to the captain's chairs option. The bench seat option, second row, should be available in all versions. I totally mm. get where you're coming from. That's where I think the Santa Fe certainly shines, because the Santa Fe, almost every trim has the bench in the middle, except the top. And in the Sorrento, only the base has it. Well, do you know what I mean? But I think that it's a good question, um, because we have Tellurides with bench seats. Yeah, that's true. Um, depending on how many adults you have or adult children. Yeah. Right? Tall children, yeah. Tall kids. And but the captain's chairs are so versatile that, you know, you can change your seats, baby seats, whatever you want to do, plus it keeps the uh, kids separated Separate, sometime, yeah. right? You put one in the back and Absolutely. that's kind of it's it's nice. Kind of our own lifestyles, right? Yeah. When it comes to adults, I totally get yeah. where you're coming from. No one really wants to sit in the third row. It's not the best seat in the house by any means, but I will say you could totally do a longer drive in the back of this car and be okay. Oh, I could do yeah, it no problem. Very much, yeah, very much so. Um, <laughs> can't wait to see a Santa Fe and Sorrento comparison. Hope to see this one day. Don't worry, we've already done that. Yeah, it's on yeah. the channel already. Yep. <laughs> yep. And Gabby, I liked your video on dual clutch tips and tricks. If the advice is to slowly if the advice is to avoid slowly creeping forward, how do you deal with slow maneuvers like parking? So, I mean, some things you just can't avoid. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you have to really, really let your vehicle creep to get into the perfect spot, that kind of thing, it's fine. It's when you're running your car for, let's say you're in 30 minutes of stop and go traffic in the hot summer's day, almost every single day, that's when it's not good for your car. Yeah. But if you've got to make fine tweaks to your parking or throw it into reverse and let the car do its thing, not apply any gas or accelerator pressure, then it, it's okay. You, you yeah. kind of get used to your own driving habits, right? Yeah. So when you're, you're in an underground parking garage, you kind of get used to that. Or if you're at the airport, yeah. going through the parking garage, yeah. it's... Just <laughs> give it enough just, gas that yeah. you get there perfectly. Re yeah. Really use your brakes. <laughs> yeah, Gabby tends to drift around in underground parking lots yeah. and stuff, so... I will say, every time I do drive a dual clutch transmission vehicle, I'm definitely more mindful of it. Um, yes, a yeah, lot of people you feel that role. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, something that I think salespeople could definitely improve on is letting people know that they're getting a dual clutch transmission. Because a lot of times people will see, oh, there's just two pedals, gas and brake. It's an automatic, and they just treat it like that. And yeah, it's different. It's a different feel. Yeah, they get surprised yeah, sure. when it feels different. If that makes yeah. sense. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's all the trivia I have today for the name Sorrento. Oh, what was it? I missed it. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Although the actual meaning of the name Sorrento is uncertain, the name Sorrento comes from a small village of Sorrento, Italy, which is heavily influenced by Greek culture. Very nice. Happy birthday to Tim. Um, Maran asked, Hi, Gabby. Any news of the Sportage 2025? So we don't have a time for when we're going to receive our first one, at least. Right? Yeah, no, nothing yet. Okay. Um, and I have yet to see a VPOG for it, too. A VPOG is what down each trim and what comes in what trim, what colors are new, that kind of thing. So I can't officially say what the differences will be. I'm really hoping yeah. we will see the new software in it because Kia will slowly implement that to all of our nameplates. We saw we saw a video on EV5. Yeah. Um, which was kind of interesting. Um, we're going to have a short build for 2024 Sorrentos. So mm -hmm. we've got a VPOG. That's our vehicle production. Mm -hmm ordering guide that um, 2025 Sorrento HEV yeah. uh, that just came available this week. I saw it, yeah. Just came available this week. So Exciting news you know, for that uh, too, timing. Right? Yeah, that'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but how many are we going to get and how many are going to be allocated to each Kia store? We don't know that yet. So, mm -hmm. But we'll let you know for sure. What else um, you got? Uh, Gabby is Gabby did a video on available cars, be um, which is really ex really exciting that we have available cars in stock now. That hasn't happened for three years. Yeah. Um, so we have 21 available cars, and you're posting at 6 p.m. tonight. Yeah. And we actually have quite a few Sorrentos on the list. Yes. So different trims. Yes. So different colors. So EX EX is kind of our middle trim. Yep. Um, I think I'll have one X line. Yep. And I think an X. Um, two LXs? LX, EX, and X lines. Yeah. Yes. So good to see some selection coming in and a Sportage and some other. Obviously, we're very excited about EV6 and we're very excited about Nero here. 
because we do a lot of electric vehicles here. Clayton asked, hi Gabby, do you know if there's any new vehicles available or used? Well, we are a dealership, so we wouldn't be doing well if we didn't have any cars. Yeah. So we do have quite a few used cars. We have just about everything. We have two heavy duty trucks now. Yep. Um, we got compact cars. We got mid-sized cars. Souls. Yep. Porsches. Lots. Yeah, um, just took in a uh, Lincoln Aviator. Aviator with 50 some K on it. Yeah. So we'll take anything and everything. Yes. Um, we just sold the 12 Sienna that just came in. Yep. Um, so that just sold today. So um, just check our website, watch, watch our website. And um, uh, we post, uh, Garth does an amazing job mm -hmm. on pictures here. Um, and it's good to see, so. Oh What's my that? gosh, Zorin's, oh, Zorin's just, back in. Zorin's there. trolling. Oh no. Okay, um, any news on the new Forte? So the Forte, there's no new news on it, but we did get information on the K4, which is not directly replacing the Forte yet, but it will take over the Forte's nameplate. Same powertrain, same transmissions, options, that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, that should be here, I want to say, in the fall. Yeah, it might be a little bit later, but yeah, as, as it comes forward, obviously we'll do video, and mm -hmm. um, Charlotte and Pat were in New York. Yeah. Two weeks ago, so they shot the car, um, and we were reminded it is not a replacement for the Forte. Not a direct replacement. But it'll be a cool yeah. car for us. Yes. It, it'll do well for us. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're at the 30-minute mark, so I think yeah. we're going to end off it's today's to video, and I think we should end it off by singing happy birthday no. to Mr. Tim. It's all good. Thank happy you. birthday. <laughs> it's all good. Thank all right. you, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you missed any or if we missed your questions in today's live stream, don't forget to leave it as a regular YouTube comment, mm. and I promise I'll get to it as soon as I can. And, of course, we will be posting our incoming inventory tonight at 6 p.m. We'll also have a video up tomorrow at 6 p.m. and podcast on Sunday at 9 a.m. Don't talk. Lots of talking. Good. All right. Well, thank you again so much for watching. We hope to see you later. Bye-bye. Wonderful weekend. Bye.